I like the theme that we have on today. It says, Ship, can you change gears? All right. And we are going to be coming from Genesis, the 39th chapter on today. Okay. We've got to basically walk the 39, 40, and so forth and so forth. Everybody knows or probably uh, familiar with the passage of scripture that I'm talking about. It's going to be Joseph. We're going to be talking about Joseph, and that's Jacob's Joseph, not Jesus Joseph, but the Jacob Joseph. So we're going to talk about Joseph. We know that Joseph had a lot of shifting in his life. Amen? Right. He had a lot of shifting in his life. I mean, he shifted gears, and, but you know what? What really blesses me on that, Joseph never gave up. He still kept his head in God's hand. Amen? Amen. Now, I don't know, probably all of you all, every, everybody probably heard of, if not played it, the Milton Bradley game, the game of life. Right. Amen? Right. And those who are not familiar with it, it's a game that simulates a person's life, his or her life, and go through the travels from college to retirement, so on and so forth. And in that game, you go through your career and your marriage and you buy a new home and you have the kids and so forth, and, and all of that. Now, how many of us wish that life was actually like that? That it's going to go through all those steps without any bumps, all right. Without any shift, without any change, without any upsets. How many of us actually think that life is going to be like that? How cool would that be if it actually was? Okay, now what happens when life throws you a curveball? Because if you are living in this world, life is definitely going to throw you a curveball. What happens when you're happy man? This happy marriage that you have because nobody starts out getting married knowing or thinking that it's going to end in divorce. So what happens when that happy marriage ends in divorce? What happens when that thriving career you've had, you've been working with your company or you've been working for your on your job for 26 more years or better and all of a sudden you're handed a termination notice or a pink slip? What happens? That's a major change. Amen? What happens when that dream house that you got, that you furnished with everything you can imagine? Come on, come on. All of a sudden, it's in foreclosure. What happens then? What happens when those darling kids that we love so much turn out to be juvenile delinquents? Or they could be mentally challenged. That will throw you a curveball. Because we don't expect that. That is not something that we expect. When we get married, we don't expect to have all of these problems. When we grow up, I mean, every child, every girl, every boy has dreams of when they grow up, what I'm going to be, what I'm going to do. Life normally never, rarely ever turns out the way you decided or the way you had planned. But I want to encourage you all today that all is well. It's always about 
be elevated. Anytime God elevates you, you can expect the haters to come in full force. And we live that. Prime example of that is when the apostle was elevated to apostle. The haters came out in full force. People praying against it. And I really couldn't understand that. I'm like, why would somebody pray against something that's happening that's good? I didn't really understand that. But you know what? That's an assignment. They don't really understand when God has this promoting you. That comes with some struggle. That doesn't happen overnight. You got to go through persecution. You got to suffer persecution. You got to fast. It keeps struggling. You're praying every night. You got to deny yourself. All these things are going on when you are praying and God is elevating you. But people don't see that all they see is the elevation. They don't know what you've been through to get to where you're going. They don't know how many times you stayed on your knees before God. They don't know how many times you turned that plate over. They don't know how many times that you've been praying and praying and praying and going without. They don't understand that. They don't realize that. But you know what? God is still good all the time. Everybody wants to be promoted but no one wants to work. on your own job, how do you expect to be promoted? So if you're, that's just with the kingdom of God. If you're not working diligently in the kingdom, how do you expect God to promote you? Amen? The Bible says, if you suffer with me, you will reign with me. So no, man didn't elevate him. God spoke that into his life actually many, many, many years ago. And it took a long time for that to manifest. It didn't come overnight. It didn't come overnight. He had to suffer for that. Psalms 75, 6 and 7. Promotion coming neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But it is God who elevates he brings up and he brings down and he exalts another. But see what happens when we get excited? Especially when we get a prophecy from the Lamb of God. Oh, we get excited and we tell everybody. Do you hear what Brother Coco told me? Yeah, he said that I was going to do this. I was going to do that. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? And people know where you're going. That's between you and God. You need to stop telling everybody your business. Amen. You need to stop telling everybody your business. And while I'm talking about that, the person I was watching the newlywed game one night, <clears throat> they get deep and personal about some of the things, you know. Since this is a women's conference, this is a women's conference, and I am talking to the women when I talk about that. So I'm going to help some of you all today. You all need to stop advertising how good your man is. If he's good, then that is between you and him. You don't advertise that to everybody. Truth, you shouldn't even be discussing. Because basically what you do is you have given them an engraved invitation to test drive him, all right? Every saint in Houston will be up in his face because you've already told them how good he is. So you know what? And the point is, everybody is looking for a good man. Amen? And there is a shortage. We know that there is a shortage.
in the same right mind as you that will help you that know the right people. Connections is everything. Yeah. That know the right people and that will help you get it done. Amen. That's what it's all about. That's who you share a dream. That's who you share your dream with. Now we're gonna go back to Joseph. Now I emphasize, I empathize with Joseph. I feel sorry for him. I can imagine how he feels. And the reason why I say that because I know how I feel sometimes. God has given me a vision. God has given me a dream. And sometimes 